Hey friend, Graham Cochran here. Got a special interview for you today. I recently got to sit down with a Grammy-winning songwriter and musician, Dwayne Hitchings, who has been in the music business for six decades. This guy has written hits for Rod Stewart. He's played with Jimi Hendrix and Alice Cooper. He's got songs in movies. He has R&B artists sampling his stuff. This guy has seen it all and done it all. We sat down recently and had a simple 30 minute conversation about what does it take to not only break into the music business, but to have longevity. How do you have a career that lasts 60 years? How do you stay in the game and still be active in this business and still be in demand? The guy stays humble. He stays in the posture of a student. He's always learning. There's so much to learn from this interview. And I think you'll just be encouraged and motivated and inspired to make music. So if you're feeling stuck in your music making or in your career or both, I think this interview with Dwayne Hitchings will really pump you up and encourage you a little bit and give you that extra push that you need today. So enjoy my conversation with my new friend, Grammy award-winning musician and songwriter, Dwayne Hitchings. Hey guys, Graham here. Got an awesome conversation with you today. I'm sitting with virtually one of my newer friends, Dwayne Hitchings, and I just want to I want to bullet his resume real quick, just so you know the kind of guy that we're talking to, and then we're gonna have a conversation. I think it's gonna be really encouraging to you. So Dwayne is a Grammy Award winning songwriter, musician, keyboard player, classically trained since he was five. These are the, some of the people he's played and recorded with: Jimi Hendrix. I, if you just stopped there, I would have been happy to talk to Dwayne. I grew up listening to Hendrix. My dad forced Hendrix down my throat. So Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jeff Beck, Etta James, Miles Davis, wrote and played with Alice Cooper, co-wrote the song, Do You Think I'm Sexy? Good old Rod Stewart. My mom would be so happy to talk to you, Dwayne. Um, he's written songs for movies. He's got lines and chords and things that he's written that have been sampled and copied and ended up in a bunch of tracks from TLC to Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., Prince, Snoop Dogg. What a wide-reaching variety of things and an amazing career. And I get this random email a few weeks back from Dwayne, one of my followers here, Recording Revolution, and he says something about some of the people he'd worked with in passing, and I, I start to do some research on this guy, and I'm starting to read his bio. I'm saying... This guy needs to be teaching people at Recording Revolution, not Graham. And so I reached out to him, and here he is to have a conversation. And Dwayne, I'm just honored to hang out with you for a little bit. I appreciate your time and appreciate you just sharing any nuggets of wisdom that you have with our audience. Well, well, me too. And and I just told Graham, I said, it's so strange to see him on the other side of the camera because I've, I've watched many, many of his videos and learned a lot. And uh, so, uh, and of course I didn't have Skype. So uh, I had to get that together. And my iMac is just loaded full of stuff and uh, no Skype, come on Hitchings, get it together. So, <laughs> Well, I'm glad we got it working out. I was curious though, uh, how did you stumble across Recording Revolution? What got you into looking at my mug all day? Oh, uh, con a Google search, always looking, and, and uh, uh, YouTube. YouTube is just, it's it's the world library for music, isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's, well, anything else you want to, uh, from nutbags to geniuses, I don't know, and everything in between. <laughs> yeah. I can have some fun with nutbags now and then, you know. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of theories of the world, flat earth, and all that stuff. I love it. I see you're rocking a, a Slate Digital shirt. I like that. Yeah, look at that. Take that, Steve, Stephen Slate, Slate. You owe me money. I was about to say, and deposit the money right here, Stephen. <laughs> he's a he's a really good guy, and I don't know if he's watching this, but he's a he's a great guy. Uh, and uh, what I love about Stephen, not only are his products amazing, and again, that's the only reason why I use them. I don't I don't get any money from him or any plugins that I review. I don't review much products, so I sort of set it up that way so that I'm not influenced by the brands. And but one of the he's I've been using his plugins for years, but when I started to meet him and, and hang out with him, you know, we see each other every year at, at NAM and we've done interview on here before. But when you get yeah. to know him, he's like actually 
the guy like he is like this character of Stephen Slate, but he's actually that's actually him. Like that is Stephen Slate. He's, oh, just a, he's a goofball, but he loves music. He's just a music lover and a technology lover. Anyway, it's cool to see you rocking that shirt. Boy, him and Fabrice. I mean, uh, is that how you pronounce it, Fabrice? Fabrice, yep. I just and uh, and of course everybody goes well. Uh, we need a limiter now. We need a limiter now, and this will go on and on. And, and uh, they come up with it. And there's ways I can do it other way, but I'm, I'm I, in in the package. Um, I, I mean, I guess maybe I could afford the whole thing, but I, for fourteen dollars and what is it, seventy five a month? And my logic is a bunch of stuff, and I got wave stuff and other toys I find around, and. Uh, but uh, I, I just, uh, I love exploring. I took a course from Armin van Buren mm -hmm. uh, from the master class where you can take things like from Annie Lebowitz, the famous photographer, yep. and all these great cooks. And uh, I think Steven Spielberg is on there. It's, it's $90 for a class. Wow. And they say it's nine hours. It took me three and a half days. But like you, I learned so much stuff. And I'm writing country rock right now. I'm waiting for country to get up just an awful period. And, uh, 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 but, uh, and then there's people like Miranda Lambert who didn't give a damn. And she's still kept coming up with good stuff. And, and, uh, but I, I'm just, uh, wow. Music is so exciting. And, uh, and I had a huge vacation when I did all this writing, uh, a long vacation. I was tired. And thankful, and uh, um, and then elect, uh, came here to Nashville in 1996. I come from a country town, South Onondaga, Central New York, um, eight miles south of Syracuse, out in cow country on a dirt road, and uh, uh, but uh, classically trained, all that other stuff. Couldn't play baseball. I had to play Chopin, <laughs> which I loved. That's awesome. But, um, Anyway, well, like, I lost what, my point. What so when, started your career, though? I mean, I, you're playing piano as, as a five-year-old and up, but what what was led to your first gig? How do you break into the music industry? You were in your teenage, teenage years, weren't you? Yeah, I was 15 years old. There was a band called Jeff and the Notes, and we had the jackets. Yes. And a quick story, because I'm a talker. Please. I, that's why I'm going to make it quick. Uh, my first gig, I went over an audition. I could play Jerry Lee Lewis with my, my knuckles and because uh, I had the technique. And these guys were men. They were 19 and 20 years old. And I was 15. Ooh, I'm cool. And I went to this gig in Auburn, New York. And Jeff, who was 19, promised me, promised my dad, promised my mom that I'd be home at 12 midnight. No gig stops at 12. And I went and played. The piano was on the floor. We couldn't get it up there. They hadn't fender basses yet in Syracuse. So it was two guitars and uh, and drums. And and I had a girl come up to me and go, oh, you're cute. And oh. grab me in the butt. And I'm going, my life, my career. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. He got me home at 3.30 in the morning because he was with some girl, went behind a barnyard and got stuck in the mud. And uh, my dad was ready to call the sheriff. And uh, and I came in and I looked at my parents and, and a lot of you out there may be in the same situation, especially if you're younger. And or you're older and talk to your wife. You know what I mean, Graham. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just say, this, I can't help it. This is what I love. This is what's in my heart. And I feel as if sometimes you got to work a gig during the day, whatever it is. But that, that, that was in your heart. I told my parents, uh, and I don't know how I came across, but they just sat there and looked at me. And I said, this is going to be my life. Yeah. And not because it's a girl. Yeah. I just loved it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, we have no choice. There's a lot of people up there, and it's a wonderful choice, wonderful choice. So thank you, God. Yeah. So what did you do with that? I mean, you got a lot of people want to do music. A lot of people feel that same love and passion that you feel, but 
they're not doing it for a career or they don't feel like they got an opportunity. Like what led to you? How do you go from that kid and near Syracuse to playing with Jimi Hendrix and Alice Cooper and Miles Davis and writing well, songs for those people? A year later, I made it a record uh, with a band called Jan and the Radiance and the four guys that sang behind her. This is doo-wop. If they weren't doing steps, uh, they couldn't keep in tune. And this was a, a, a Ampex tape recorder this big, one take, and that was it. And then I got the idea of a record. I made $15, found out it was a, world, a complete hit when I went to school. Anyway, went to the conservatory, went to all that stuff. And, uh, and this owner, and this is how, what led me into it, the owner of a jazz club on South Broad uh, said, Hitch, you got to come see something. I got a place called Electric Factory. This is a new type of music, completely. And the name of the bands is The Cream and Paul Butterfield Blues Band. I said, The Cream? I got to see something called The Cream? Well, it was one of these wimpy ass groups. But Paul the Butterfield and the Blues Band, as you know, horns. Okay, yeah, okay, horns, blues. Okay, fine. I went. He tricked me, and I sat from what looks like from you to me about eight feet away in front of Ginger Baker's drums. Wow. And uh, there's Clapton on one side and Jack Bruce on the other. Yeah. I was toast. That was it. And the last band that summer was the Buddy Mouse Express. Wow. And uh, 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 with Electric Flag, Michael Bloomfield had quit that night. And that that's what got me into it. So the Buddy Mouse Express, and I met Jimi Hendrix, which is I mean, just the sweetest dude in the world, man. Stone genius. One third black, one third white, and one third Indian, which is China, you know, <laughs> Oriental. So he was a bit of everything. Yeah. What a sweet man. And just and Jimmy McCarty from the Detroit Wheels and played with Buddy Moss. We just sit there and watch him do Red House. And uh, and after music, oh. That night that I saw the cream, I went back. We had the first uh, Moog synthesizer. Mm, wow. He used to come down and fix it because oh. he couldn't afford a repairman. That's awesome. <laughs> and I did Sunshine of Your Love. You had to have about 12 cords around your neck to plug stuff in to get one sine wave. I was up to 8 o'clock in the morning. I was hooked. That was it. So. You just were, you were in the right place when all of this was happening. You just, you were sort of hand yeah. plucked in, like, into the, this, the world that was starting to explode. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just kind of bumbled into it, you know, and uh, I had to play. Oh yeah. I play fairly well. Yeah. Cause there were some B3 players around me, me that could kick some serious ass, especially when I, when I moved to uh, San Francisco and, wow. uh, then after that, Cactus, Carmine, and Timmy Bogart. Um, and we did real well. And then a little point of starving, because if you think you've got anybody out there that thinks they're all, well, already with a big group and got their big break and stuff, no, no, no. There's a valley coming, maybe, yeah. and uh, or a valley afterwards. And uh, and then uh, uh, and then uh, when Carmine and Timmy, we were on open for Rod Stewart and The Faces. And the Jay Giles uh, Blues Band, which kicked ass, and uh, and then I got to know Rod, uh, awesome. and uh, real well, and then, then the rest because it, do you think I'm sexy? If you don't mind, I got to tell a story, short, yeah. that is the most important thing I tell people when I'm talking to ask ever be in my life. I was starving after cactus. I lived up on Gower, up in North Hollywood, and. Uh, uh, I had $20 on me. That was it. I was three months late in my rent. Sound familiar to anybody? And Carmine called up and says, Hey, Dwayne. He's from Brooklyn. Dwayne, Rod wants to write a disco. The English guys, they don't know how to write a disco. Yeah, dude, Rod wants one right now. we got to write a disco. I said, well, fine. Carmine, great, man. Yeah. He called because I forgot my grocery list. The 10 seconds that I went in to get my grocery list. Oh man. $20 and went back out in the car. Had I not picked up the phone, my life would be completely different. Wow. 
And that's why I'm telling everybody, and you've told somebody because I've heard you tell them, pick up the phone, pay attention to the messages you get, right? And uh, it may be the one, and it changed my entire life, that 10 seconds. Wow. And, and he says, I said, well, what are we going to do it? Well, you said you're stupid. A Brooklyn expression. Uh, I'm on the driveway. I'm coming in right now. So we wrote it in 20 minutes. A little drum box, Fender piano. Wow. <laughs> so we got off the rods, and uh, said, that's it. And do you think I'm sexy it was a joke on uh, disco? And so was the video. But I don't think we went far enough because some people, well, oh, Rod's going to die. This is it. Uh, no, he did not die. So I went on wow. to write three other hits with him. Wow. So much Jeff back. That was it. But, uh, and I have a philosophy, and I'm not trying to jam it down anybody's throat, but uh, there is a power. There is a power that will lead you into stuff if you just, just, I'm thankful for. Yeah. Very thankful for. No, I, if you I believe it, it's your business. If you don't, I do, because I'm not that smart to get there. I was good. I did my practicing. I knew my scales. <laughs> no, I appreciate you saying that, though, because, you know, you've lived long enough to have the right to tell us the way things really are, because when you're, when you're young, you think you can do anything. Uh, and at least in my generation, I was told I can do anything. But as you get a little bit older, you realize I can't do anything. There's limits to what I can control. And that there's things that I tr want myself to control and my students to control, which is what you described, practicing, getting better at your craft, your soft skills like people skills, taking opportunities, serving others. You can control doing those things. Oh, yeah. But you yeah. can't manipulate your life in such a way that you guarantee an outcome or an opportunity. We aren't ultimately in control of those things, but you were ready. And I also appreciate you sharing the valleys because I think that I could look at your resume and anybody who's been successful, you could look at their resume and see, oh, it's like you said, it's flat and you get that big break and then it's just smooth sailing from there. But they don't see the in-between the bullet points, which you just described, which is you've already worked with some of the biggest names in music ever up until that point where you're down to $20. Yeah. It, it just shows that it's a constant fight. It's constant work. So I appreciate you kind of being honest about that. Oh, absolutely. It's, it, it's, the, way it, it's the way it was. I just learned stuff about logic. I've had Pro Tools. Uh, when I had the money, I spent 23000 Excuse me, fifteen thousand dollars for Pro Tools. The MIDI didn't work yet. Nineteen eighty-three, <laughs> and I know Pro Tools pretty much, but I use Logic because it's more of a songwriter's thing. It's got all these loops and stuff, and and uh, but uh, I spent the ninety dollars to watch Armin Van Buren do this thing I mentioned to you before. I suggest everyone watch it. I have never, ever seen anybody be so precise and specific. But key, it's a great course. That's you know, like electronic music, eh, he does a DJ thing at the end. But the way he used and thought about stuff, he, had a, he has a partner that he works with to keep him on track. Yep. And uh, I suggest everyone watch that i'm i'm just blown away 90 hours it took me four days to get through it yeah but uh and i had also the absolute pleasure of working with tommy dowd and who did so wow. many things uh, oh, from wow. the brothers to rod yeah. and richie potter three dog night stephen wolf um uh and uh and alice and uh but uh and right now i'm writing something for rod if he's looking are you looking, man? My wife and I want to buy this townhouse. <laughs> we live in a boat. I, my wife is wonderful. She's a teacher at Montessori oh, School. Cool. And she's a child psychologist. Think about that for a minute, Graham. Child psychologist mm -hmm. and a musician married. Mm. That's poetry. Mm -hmm. That's why it works so well. Mm -hmm. That's, that. I love it. What? That's what? kind of scary, though. To be married to a psychologist of any kind, you know they're reading your mind. You know they know you inside and out. Yeah, but I'm fast. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, we, awesome. uh, any woman you get to live on a boat. I lived on five boats. Oh, that's I was so cool. Up through my, well, I was doing all this stuff. Uh, and I'm back at it again. Country music rock. Country and rock and EDM are coming together. Wow. Yeah. Watch the Keith Urban album. Okay. And then there's Chris Stapleton. Mm-hmm. And Zach Brown on one side, I heard this kid yesterday who's going to be an enormous talent. And then I watch Armin. And I go, I want to do a progressive side trance. Yeah. I got to do it, but I got this other stuff I got to do too. So. I, lo- I just love your enthusiasm, Dwayne. I, it's infectious, both your enthusiasm for music still, all these decades later, and your enthusiasm for learning and your humility to want to like still learn from people and be surprised and be blown away. Uh, Cause I feel like you could go in one of two directions, which is the way you've gone or the way which you're like, I know it all. I've done it all. And you sort of, without thinking about it, close yourself off to yeah. that childlike discovery and playfulness of, Oh, that's cool. Or I like that sound. And you yeah. you seem to be benefiting from making that choice. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. But then I look at Keith Urban and he does a pop album, and he pulled it off with banjo. Now, wait a minute. He's doing and he, he's doing a funk track on, with banjo and his voice, so it's it, it, it's 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 all open. I'm going to give you another word of advice. Do not sell anything. Do not sell anything. I'm looking at the thing. <laughs> anything that you don't have to sell, hmm. like your publishing. Right. I got talked to them that once. Now, it's not your ASCAP, my ASCAP, or your BMI. Right. But number one, get a good attorney. And I learned one more thing from Armin, and I'm going to put it right on the wall, right there. Two things. One is going, are you having fun? And that hit me yesterday like, whoa. He says, if you're not. He says, what I do is PlayStation. That's it. You know, and the other one is a clock. And for every hour, it says now. Mm. <laughs> so it's like, awesome. it's four. What am I going to do? Now, work. <laughs> so, you know, whatever, whatever. Well, I, I mean, I, there's... It's my two cents. I know, but there's definitely a connection between the way you think and the way you're describing it and that infectious joy and enthusiasm that probably has connected you to also getting gigs because you're probably a guy that's easy to work with there's probably a guy that's like when you're working with rod it's not about you you're writing a song for somebody you're co-writing but you're writing a song for somebody it's not really the Dwayne show it's the rod show you're trying to think about what would serve his voice and his style and that's what's probably helped make you successful would you agree yeah oh study like uh young turks um Young Turk's got a bass ding 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 and I might um uh oh for heaven's sakes, who are the guys that wore the electronic guy that wore the flower pots upside down? The red flower pots. Oh jeez, I can't help you out with that. It was electronic, it was ding 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 ding. Because I was trying to think of them. I gave him four cassettes. I'd usually give him cassettes with five ideas on each cassette. No. Okay, do another cassette, five ideas. No, do another cassette. And each cassette would have some without the melody and with the melody. And I would study him. I would study mm. to make him happy. You know, uh, if I made him happy, then I'm happy. If I'm happy, my wife is happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> well, so, it's, it's so it's, cool because, you know, I would say from my knowledge of my audience, most of them, not all of them, but a majority of them are writing their own music and recording it themselves and performing it themselves. So it's all kind of, they're doing all, all of it. And th- many of them think there's this one, one track, which is be the artist, write the songs. And because nowadays you can, it's a wonderful time to make music as you're discovering because yeah. we, we idea can become a finished product streaming this afternoon online and you don't have to involve other people or ask for permission. That doesn't mean it's always the best way to do it, but it is possible. But it sounds like you've made a career 
you are you are a musician, but you've really made a career by writing songs for other people as well, and yeah. take taking song like you have the ideas in your head, but instead of saying you know what this is for me and I'm going to make it about me, you're like this would be a great song for Alice Cooper or Rod Stewart, exactly. and yeah. all of a sudden it becomes a bigger thing than it was. And I, I think maybe you could speak to that for someone who's not really thought about writing songs for other people um, that maybe speak to what's what's possible if they just maybe think of another option for their ideas and their creativity that's locked inside, you know? Yeah, it, um, the idea is, of course, I've always been a backline back line guy. You know, I can't sing. I mean, I could scare all the birds around the house here. It's horrible. You know, uh, I joke that, you know, I came along... Here comes Hitchings, and okay, we'll give him lots of talent to write and play and all that stuff. Uh, what about a voice? I don't know. The Lord went out to McDonald's. I don't know. Well, okay, he's got enough. Let him go. <laughs> and I mean, I sound like a train wreck. But um, the, the, the idea is money. Oh my God. You know, the money cannot come first. You just, just, but the challenge is what will make him happy? Because you got to love the artist. You gotta love the artist. You can't look, you write for somebody you don't like, and uh, you think, oh, you try to think the vocal head. And uh, right now, I have. I don't know if he's gonna do another album yet. I'm trying to get a hold of him. And if he did, I got an idea how you can have guitars and electronic music at the same time. Because well, no, Rod Stewart and I go do 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 do. Yeah, he did. Do you think I'm sexy? Here I did. So, but I got an artist of mine. I'm going to keep it a secret, so nobody's going to find out. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm uh, is a huge uh, uh, EDM artist, and it would fit with him. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's cool. I'm listening. I'm listening. What and like. What Armin told me the other day, it, it's just more than obvious, but are you having fun? You know, you know exactly what I'm doing, talking about, Graham. Oh, yeah. You know? Because yeah. we, we somehow, I don't know how it happens, because it happens to me. We all got into this because we love it, and it's fun. But then yeah. at some point, whether it's because it becomes our work, which that's happened to me, or because we get stuck in learning something and we're trying to perfect it, we... What was a good idea to make my drum sound better or my vocal sound better now becomes the goal. And then now it's not fun anymore because it's work and it's not what we wanted it to be. And we, where did the fun go? We look up and it's gone. And you can't actually do great work when you're not in that zone and having oh, fun. No way. It's just so strange. You know that. And, and, you, and uh, I watch you because you're having a lot of fun. You are. You're having a ball. You're an outrageous teacher. And that's that's that. Okay. My, my my wife is a head teacher at a Montessori school, and she's got some not expensive here in Hendersonville, Tennessee. You can get in cheap, you know. So, but uh, uh, she works with with kids uh, that uh, have got special talent and stuff, and she knows how to just play back, you know. And same thing with you and me and everybody out there. You just. Are you having fun? No? Get up. I hate exercise, so I'd have to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> a good chocolate donut, and I, and I do this rarely because there's aspartame. You know the whole deal, but I get something about a Diet Coke every other day and a couple of chocolate donuts from the Esso station. Uh, Esso? Where did I get that one? That shows you how old I am. Yeah. From Shell Gas Station. Yeah. Yeah. And I come back and I I'm like going, your right. style. Yeah, I like yeah. your style. You said you had me at chocolate donuts. I I would live off that stuff if my wife weren't looking. We do a lot more um, kale, kombucha, spiralized zucchini noodles, things of that nature. But she's not yeah. watching, so it's okay. Hey, I want to health food. What'd you say? Is that health food? Yes. Yeah, my my wife and I. I um, I had prostate cancer. Mm. A year and three months ago. Wow. And that, that woke my ass up because wow. I'm 75 years old. And uh, my family lives in 95 to 100. We're like cockroaches. You, you know, pull our head off and our legs will see, still keep moving. But um, uh, by the way, there's a writer in country music for any of the older ones out there. And I know you have people, students that are 
uh, uh, Whispering Bill Smith, Whispering Bill, I think that's his name, Whispering Bill, and uh, Whispering Bill Anderson, got to, uh, Brooks. Uh, let me see, is uh, um, oh, oh, for heaven's sakes, John Rich. There we go, big and rich. There we go, John Rich, and Whispering Bill. 83 years old, and John Rich is, you know, 30, 31. Yeah. Very smart. Killer producer. They got together and wrote a hit. Wow. Next year, Bill was a year older. 84, was it? I say 83, yeah. 84. Wrote another hit, number one hit. 85 got together and wrote a hit, and it just wasn't John Rich. Was from Bill Anderson, I think, has got something like 40, 50 number ones wow. for the years. Wow. So it's never too late. It's I love it. Late. I love it. And yeah. that, that's a great way to, I, I want to sort of wrap this up with, you kind of almost answered it, but if you're looking back, to, if you could go back and talk to your 20-year-old, your 30-year-old self, and if he were living right now, 2018 or whatever, what, did, what would you give for advice for that version of you if he hadn't broken into the industry yet and is feeling like I'm writing the best songs I can I'm trying to practice I'm trying to do all these things but it's not happening yet what advice would you give him remember that lady that was on the voice she came from England she was a dowdy old woman yeah what was her name she blew it away yeah she's what 68 years old and got on there and came out with her school dress there's the answer right there there's the answer right there I mean, it's, 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 it's rare, but, uh, it's teaching. Oh, who am I talking to? You're a great musician, great singer, the whole deal. And a uh, good family man. Cause you just decided to dig down and, and what did the power of the be show you? I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach. And who knows one of these days you might, do something else or do something beside that. But what you're doing maybe is a whole lot more important than what I do. Because mm. what do you got, three, 400,000 people out there? You know, that's, 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 that's admirable. And I, 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 because I'm talking to you right now, but I'd really admire you for that. You just, mm. uh, and you know your stuff. And, and so, but it's nothing, something like too old. I mean, and now, the, I tell myself this, the 75 is the, uh, is the new 65. <laughs> well, 65 is still old, Hitchings. So, <laughs> but, uh, man, I'm going to put on, I, I, I'm i trying, I do not want to do progressive side trance this afternoon because I've been listening to Armin Van Buren. But yeah. I'm going to write for Rod if he's going to, and if that does the song go there, then it's going to go, uh, for Trace Atkins or somebody or That's something cool. else. But uh, yeah, don't ever you. quit, guys. Girls, don't quit. Don't quit. Because if you got that bug, uh, it's a good drug. Yes. Not a bad drug. Yes. By the way, I got rid of the cancer. It's the radiation that's oh, the problem. Yeah, praise God. That's awesome. It woke my butt up. I'll yeah. tell you, no more Diet Cokes. Except once every two weeks. There you go. You got a little, sure. little. Stuff. You got to take care of yourself. Dude, and I've had a problem. Awesome. I had to get, I had to rid myself mm. of a problem. Mm. But, uh, and it's, I can't say, but it's been 30 years. Yeah. And uh, since I've lived the right life of a rock and roller. So. Well, Dwayne, you are a, an inspiration to me. I mean, you're getting me like fired up right now. I, I only hope that when I'm 75, I'm writing songs and kicking butt and, and diving into logic tutorials and, and watching YouTube videos and learning and being excited again. Um, I think so much of my life personally can be s described as impatient. And why hasn't this happened yet? Or when I was 16, it was like, why hasn't this happened yet? And I'm 35 I'm now. I'm right now. So Welcome I, to the club. <laughs> I know. It's it, it never. It, I'm always wanting it now, and and you've got a it's little a more fire perspective. Under your butt, though, isn't it? It's it is. Butt. It is. But there's also that long game of, you've got you, you know. Well, we don't know how long we have, but we've got our whole life, so it doesn't all have to happen right now. But if you're serving people, I heard that. If you're having fun, 
And if yeah. money isn't coming first, that's the problem is we need money to live. It's important. Got to work a day gig. Yeah. But it can't I'm be driving the... gravel trucks for my dad in between that. There you go. I like driving gravel trucks, but I'd much rather do what you and me do. Yeah. But, uh, and you give, you said something that was extremely important. And it's in your course, and, and I'm not doing ads for you. I'm just coming out and saying it. Everybody listening, pay attention to this man. I'm really serious. You said something that that uh, um, that is to give. You gave first. You were right on the edge of being broke. You had a family, all this stuff. And you just had a faith to me in a higher power. And I know how you feel about that. And you give and it just comes back. It's just, it's just, it give to people. It all comes back. It's like smiling at a baby and you, you comfort the baby and you give it some food. What do you do? Yes. Thank you, dad. <laughs> yeah. But you're getting it all back. See? Yeah. And living a good life and, uh, you're not over with yet. Oh no, I'm not. You I'm not, not be. I'll no, I'm not over. Man. But you're and just... I have paid you a dime. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am definitely not over. I, I just, I'm trying to identify with anyone who's watching this who has felt at in the past at any point of like, dude, this isn't happening. I've, I felt that, and then I've been given so many great opportunities that have kick started my career. But I'm just, I, I'm. If anything, this is one reason why I knew I wanted to talk to you. If anything, you fired me up even more. And I aspire to continue to serve and be creative and learn and innovate and be humble and excited all the way into my 70s and beyond like you. So thank you for sharing not only your story, but your infectious desire and love for music with my audience who is both young and old. And uh, I, I really hope that people have really gotten a lot out of this. And if anything, they've gotten inspired to make music, which I think is more important than just more facts and knowledge about how to is you need to have that driving desire to get in there, get your hands dirty. Otherwise, you'll never get past the roadblocks you're stuck at. Don't look at walls. You said that. Don't look at walls. Have one day at a time and give. Yeah. You're a perfect example of it. Oh, I appreciate it, Dwayne. Thanks for the time, man. Thanks for hanging out today. Oh, thank you, man. So weird to see you. <laughs> I got Graham on my TV computer. <laughs> uh, uh, the honor hey, is all mine. It really is. Hey, me too, man. Hey, Take care, brother, and God you bless. You too. Same to you, my man. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Just watching it back gets me fired up to make music. I want to give you something before you go. One of the things that I loved about this interview with Dwayne was his love for all things music and how he didn't really focus on technical stuff or even the business side of things, he focused on music and making the music sound so good and working on his craft as a songwriter and just wanting to fall in love with the projects he's working on and the people he's working with that I think his focus was in the right place. And so one thing I wanna give you that will help your focus be in the right place is my six steps to a radio ready song guide. This is a simple PDF that you need because it's going to take you from being lost in YouTube land, watching interviews, looking for tutorials, trying to perfect your craft, and missing the point, which is what things actually make a hit song. Or what things actually make a song sound so good that it could be played on the radio. And it is radio worthy or radio ready. It's not sample rate. It's not what DAW you use. It's not acoustic treatment. It's none of these random things. It is a six-step process or framework that all songs go through. And that includes the songwriting phase. That's one of those six steps. So if you want to get focused and get back to just making music and not getting lost in the weeds of all the details that don't ultimately matter, then you need this guide. It's a free download. Just go to RadioReadyGuide.com. We'll put the link right here, and it's in the description box below. RadioReadyGuide.com. Download the PDF. Read it. Enjoy it. Keep it as a resource and it'll walk you through all six steps. So when you've got a song idea or if you're feeling fired up after this interview, you want to go write a song, go make some music, you'll know exactly what process to take your songs through so that you're not just writing something, maybe recording a little bit and then not sure if it's release worthy or is it done? Is it not done? This way, you know if it's done or not. It gives you the six steps that every major song goes through 
All songs have to go through all six of these steps. And it gives you that roadmap. It gives you tips and tricks for all six of those steps. And it'll give you a framework for making music that keeps it fun, keeps it focused so that you don't get lost in the weeds and you can just do what you love to do, which is make killer music. So download it as my gift to you. Thanks for watching this video and any of these videos. Just go to RadioReadyGuide.com. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to these videos if you enjoy them. And I will see you on another video real soon.